everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie, and I'm joined here with Zenrot. Hello. And this is Shonen Archive, the series in which me and Zen have decided to dedicate ourselves to watching every single thing related to Shonen Jump, anime-wise. And probably live action when it comes down to it, after I did some research on some stuff. But we will plan to do this until <laughs> the actual end of everything that we know and love and dear, or one of us goes out, until, in which case the Until other climate is... change takes us out. <laughs> okay, so we have two years. So we have two more years of the show. Hopefully by then, <laughs> we will finish it up. <laughs> yeah, we've got until next February. <laughs> and then the show's over. Oh god, we have until One Piece officially ends, so we have any time. <laughs> Whichever one happens first, <laughs> climate change takes us out, or One Piece ends and the world ends as well. <laughs> Whichever one happens first. And here today, we're going to be doing something where we're going to finally be able to talk about... We've been talking about Gintama and GX for, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX throughout at all. But we finally hit the point where we can actually watch the first Gintama movie, which is... The official name of it is called... Let me look up. Uh, Gintama. Oh, did I close the freaking? I did. Why did wasn't I? Wasn't it just to... like Benny Zakura arc something? It's it's it has like a full a new retelling Benny Zakura. Gintama arc. number one Shinyaku Benny Zakura. Yeah, a new retelling Benny Zakura arc, which is the first movie. Uh, before we get into that one, before we get into it, I actually have some notes because it's been such a long time since I've had to give a history of anything. So I figured, why not? Since it's the first movie. <laughs> Let's right. go. Are you ready, Zen? I'm ready. All right. Learning this, time. Yeah, learning time. So this movie originally released in April 24, 2020, 2020 no, 2010. And it's a retelling of the Benazakura arc from the Gintama manga such anime. Originally, it debuted in 2006 in manga form and 2007 in anime form. So we have four years from the manga difference in three years. And what a big difference three years makes in anime form, especially when you have a movie budget. Um, it is the first of the Gintama movies with two other anime movies. The, the, the list of them are Gintama, the movie, the, f <laughs> and then next is Gintama, the movie, the final chapter be forever. Yorozuka, Yorozuya. Uh, and then the final movie for Gintama, which is called Gintama, the very final, <laughs> which I'm, I'm also not a hundred percent sure either one of them is actually the final thing of Gintama. <laughs> And then there's also two live action movies called Gintama. And then Gintama 2, The Law is, sure, is Surely There to Be Broken, which are the live action ones. I think I one of the live action Gintamas is also the Benny Zakura arc. Really? Um, we'll, we'll I, I am pretty sure that, feel, that it is, yeah. Feel um, free to correct us. I'm going to look it up there. now and see if that's oh, can, correct. Can see it there too. That works too. As I continue to go on, uh, so this is actually kind of interesting because as most people know, or maybe most people don't know, they would expect an anime movie to actually be yeah, telling... It's the, it's the first live action film. It's the Benny Sakura arc in live <laughs> action. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I can't wait to get to that movie again and we can talk about this arc three times. <laughs> Uh, but believe it or not, this is not the first or last time a Shonen Jump movie has been released where it's just literally one specific arc. I have put down some examples here, Zen. Are you ready to hear the full case of movies that are literally just the retelling of an arc? Yes. Ready. First, we've got the all-time classic Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rupees, along with Sleeping Princess in the Devil's Castle and Mystical Adventure. Three amazingly re amazingly wrong retellings of the Dragon Ball story. Yeah, those almost I almost feel like those hardly count as retellings because they're they're like reimaginings almost. It's they're like bored, sort of the same but yeah. very different in some places. Exactly. Isn't one of those the one where Chaozu is the prince? Yes. Oh my god, I can't wait till we get to Mystical Adventure. I love Mystical <laughs> Adventure so much. That's the I, one where Emperor Chaozu... Which one is the one where Goku has to avenge uh, the the guy's dad? That's three. That's Mystical Adventure. Is that Mystical Adventure? That's Mystical I, Adventure. I, I was young, and we were at a beach house when... Uh, and they had that movie in the room I was staying in. I think I watched Mystical Adventure like 43 times while we were down there on that trip. Man, that's, I can't wait till we get there. You just hold on to your butts when we finally get to Dragon Ball and we have to go through all that. <laughs> also, the I'm, I'm counting these two in, but trust me, it's a very weird example. Uh, of course, Battle of Gods and ROF were a resurrection of Frieza. Those were actually movies first. the other then, way around. Yeah, but the yeah. other way around. Uh, next, Space Adventure Cobra based off of the manga Cobra and also the anime. 
episode Alabasta and episode Chopper from One Piece. The Chopper one is really funny because that's like also in the similar vein of the One Piece ones where in this one it's like post water seven so originally when they get chopper they don't have frankie and they don't have nico robin but for some reason in this one they were like hey what if um what if they save chopper for last <laughs> for some reason <laughs> well that kind of reminds me of this movie because i feel like there was a lot of characters that got put into this movie for seemingly no reason Yes, and I want to say it's probably also because of that. Is that that's also the reason they did it? Funny enough, this movie lost the best Japanese animated uh, award show to Ponyo. <laughs> Just to let you know when this released, it was up to Ponyo and Episode <laughs> Chopper, which really goes to show you how long has One Piece been going on when Ponyo was going up against one of its anime movies. <laughs> <laughs> All four of the Captain Tsubasa movies, which are all various retellings of the specific arts, all called Captain Tsubasa, except for one of them, which is called Captain Tsubasa J. Uh, this one I put in here because I needed to have a reminder that we have to watch this at some point. The Jackie Chan City Hunter movie, which is actually based off of the manga City Hunter and also the anime. That's the one, the famous gif of uh, Jackie Chan dressed up as Chun-Li that comes from the City Hunter movie. Uh, Dr. Slump, Aureli Chan, Hello, Wonder Island, which is the retelling, I think, of two specific chapters in the anime. I think it was like a 30-minute production. It was really weird. Everything about this specific movie, when I looked it up, was like, yeah, it was like technically made with the anime, and then the anime had to do another retelling of this one. So really, it was the predecessor of ROF and Battle of Gods for Dragon Ball. Huh. Uh, That's pretty funny. Yep. Yeah. Every single one of the Fist of the North Star movies are retellings of the specific arts of uh, Fist of the North Star. Um, the Phantom Blood movie that is lost because it was so bad. The JoJo's uh, Part 1 Phantom oh, Blood. Oh, yeah, the Forbidden movie. Yeah, the Forbidden movie. The one, if you don't know this, is actually considered a lost film now. Not because they don't know where it is. It's because they don't want to show it to us because for the anniversary of JoJo, they created a Phantom Blood movie which is a retelling of the first uh, part of JoJo. And apparently it was so bad, it barely lasted any time in the theaters. Very little bit of people got to see it other than the terrible reviews for it, and they've kind of locked it away and it cannot be seen, which is a shame. Because yeah, now it's like jo uh, <laughs> sealed away in the Fortress of Solitude or something. Like It's in yeah. a phantom zone. I would really, I really want to see this movie because I kind of am I want to see it too so badly. I think, I, I swear to God, Someone on the internet uploaded like one clip of it for like mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Yes. And ever since I saw that, I was like, I need to see that. Yes. If any, if the second they find this movie, by the way, we're doing it. We're dropping everything and we are doing this movie. If it ever gets found, oh, I promise you that. Someone needs to like steal that movie out of whatever vault it's hidden <laughs> They need in. to break it to Araki's vault. Cabin where he's only got yeah, like the one, the, the one, one real. Copy? <laughs> he holds it in a vault and when he hears someone's coming he goes to sit down in his chair grabs a wine and grabs a pistol and say bring it on <laughs> I knew they'd come I for knew it you eventually. would come <laughs> I knew you would come one of the Prince of Tennis movies is a retelling of one of the arcs I think it's like I think it was a, a general overall of the Prince of Tennis when I looked it up of course, Jujutsu. I can tell you. Yeah, there you go. I think it's the second one of them the Jujutsu Kai Kaizen Zero which is just a retelling of the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero manga. And of course the one that has made the most money, Demon Slayer Mugen Train, which is the most uh the one most people would probably know is just a retelling of an arc. I was actually kinda of surprised how many of these these are also just specifically shown in jump. Like I don't know how many Detective Conan movies are literally just retellings of Detective Conan uh, arcs because Detective Conan has like twenty seven different movies. <laughs> That's it, that's yeah, well, Detective Conan uh, is, like, contractually never allowed to end. So. Yeah, no, never, never going to end. Same thing kind of goes for um, Go Go 13. I'm not 100% sure, but that's basically it for the Shonen Jump side that I could even find. There's probably even more. Now, before we actually get into it, I have a question for you, Zen. After watching this, do you actually think that it's better for them to make an original story or to just show you the arc you like but with better animation? <sighs> That's hard to say because I, I okay. Personally, I had more fun watching this in the anime episodes. Um, I, I actually kind of agree with you on that one. I, but I, I preferred the anime episodes to this. Uh, not a lot, but I definitely did. Uh, and I think part of that is because 
the anime episodes were the first exposure, so there was all that hype there. Yeah. And then we went right into this, and so much of this... Again, part of this may have been because I watch the the episodes for our weekly shows on like my big HDTV and mm-hmm. everything, and I watch this on some shitty pirate site. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like a lot of scenes from this movie literally felt like they just plugged the anime scene in there and played it again. Like a really notable one for me is um, Kagura's fight on the boat before yeah. she gets taken captive. Um, that's like shot for shot. Almost yes, exactly the same. It's very similar. Um, there's a there's a couple differences. Like I think it's a little bit different when they like ha- when she's on the ground and her and the girl have each other at gunpoint. Um, I think it's like minorly different there. Mm. Uh, but all of her fight scenes in that fight could have been lifted straight from the anime, and I, you wouldn't have been able to tell me that like it was any different. And it, I might just not have been able to pick up on the increase of like the quality or whatever. Because again, watching on a shitty little pirate site mm. versus watching yeah. on a nice big tv what you're saying but is a lot to, of it someone needs to was, buy was, you the dvd and send it to you so you can watch it on the big screen yes the so i can properly appreciate it all right if, um if we're gonna start a p.o <laughs> box so that people can send you a copy of the blu-ray edition of the Gintama movie that they can gladly send yeah so it was this. it was um not like a you know it wasn't the worst thing ever but i was just a little surprised by how much of it felt it's reused as opposed to like reimagined or anything it just felt very like Hey, I remember this because I just did this, um, like a remaster. And then there's also the uh, the the new stuff that was added was all mostly good, um, but I feel like some of it was detrimental. Like I don't know why Kagura's brother was in this. Um, the only I reason I know who that is reference. is is because of Jumpuchi. Yes, yeah, because he's here. a character in that. Yeah. yeah um, but I have no idea why he was there, other than, I guess, for people who had already seen the anime when this came out, to be like, oh, look! Um, yeah, I think the it's Shinsengumi the, yeah. shoehorned into this really hard, for no reason. For an um, end bit. <laughs> for an end bit game. The, the end bit was good. The end bit was funny. Yes. Um, I feel like the actual, only reason... Okay. <laughs> the end bit was funny, and the one scene with Okita, where uh, Gintoki is walking... And Okita is the one who gives the speech about, like, there's the the murderer walking the streets, and the blade is like a living creature. And Gintoki goes, that's exactly what the woman inside just told me. Because in the anime, <laughs> she's the one that gives that thing. That was funny. <laughs> that, is um, funny. Yeah. that was good. But, like, there was the whole weird scene in the beginning where they're, like, a giant exposition scene from the Shinsengumi that I was like, this is weird, and... I don't know why this is here. And then they ended up not doing anything in the end of it anyway. Um, they show up at the end. Apparently, the, I think if I remember right, because someone did tell us that we should probably watch the next anime episode because that one's actually kind of a wrap-up. I think that Shinsengumi guy, the one with the uh, the racket, I think he's kind of the central focus of kind of wrapping everything up because at the end, Kondo says, like, give us a report about everything. And oh, I think that's, that... uh, that's Toshiro. Yes. I think he's. I yeah, because the Rapka guy is the one that he always bullies. Yes, yes, yes. So I think we'll hear something about that. We, w- someone did suggest that we should try and see the next one, and I was going to mention it, but then work showed up out of nowhere, so we we're going to have to save that for next uh, for next week. So we'll know if that tied in. But yeah, overall, it was uh, in a way. It really would help. Actually, I feel like if I could see this movie in the actual big screen in a movie theater. I think it would change a lot of things just because of how much I do think it looks a lot yes, cleaner I, than it. A pirate site definitely didn't help uh, no, the case no. yes, for sorry. the improvements. Please. Um, uh, legitimate sites, please <laughs> add Gintama so we can. For the love of God, yeah, add the Gintama movie. Um, yes. Also, oh fuck, I had a point and I just lost it. No. Um, as, as good as the movie's theme song is, the anime mm. opening hit me a lot harder. I would also agree with that notion there is that I did I did like that they kept a song there but then when I was thinking about it ah but the way that the anime does it you really needs the song there so I really feel like it might have actually been better to see this as like many episodes later and to have it as a refor like it's better to have a refresh of it than to actually see it at the same time as the actual episode Yeah this this feels a lot like hey did you like the Benny Zakra arc, here's a shitload of fan service for that, which I'm down with, like, totally. Um, 
and it still hit all the right beats. Like the the great moments were still great, etc. Um, but I think in terms of like my raw enjoyment of it, I think I preferred uh, watching it in the anime. Yeah, I, I think there is definitely something to the way the anime builds up, and I think it's also because maybe it, we are in a very sp- special. But that's true. But back in the day when people were seeing it, they were seeing it a week at a time. So I feel like we're getting as close to that kind of experience as anyone else watching it, kind of week by week. Almost kind of funny enough. I guess if what if Toonami did like one a series ever a day for five episodes, and then you had to wait a week. That's kind of like how this show is currently structured: is that we have to like watch an anime. But it's like as if it was one episode a day each, so we kind of get that build up a little bit better. Whereas most That's people true. probably yeah. binge through Just most binge of it. Through. Kind of, yeah, so it's a little bit of a different experience. So I do think that the movie itself looks uh, great. I watch everything on a kind of a computer monitor, so I can say for sure when I looked at it, there was some big differences in it one of the big ones is of course the fact that it's actually full screen <laughs> that the entire thing is full screen because I, the regular gintama is i think still 480 and it's gonna be for about 100 or 200 more episodes i think it's gonna be a very long time before it goes into <laughs> okay. widescreen if i remember correctly someone once told me there was a whole joke about it and stuff like that um but to kind of go around to it back to the uh, the point i was trying to make it's I'm trying to think about like what I actually want from an anime movie. Whether I want a new so a new experience, because I feel like whenever there's a new experience, the first thing my head goes to is, so how does this make sense into the actual series? And I feel like most movies are like, come on, man, <laughs> don't care about this, please. <laughs> and when they do, kind of try. Yeah, and care well, about there's it. like like kind of the Dragon Ball approach where they're like, mm-hmm. oh, we just do what the fuck ever, yeah. <laughs> and you have to make a crazy ass weird timeline to make it all fit. That Toriyama like shows up smoking a hoagie my and favorite. Says, says, let's go. This takes place after the Frieza arc, but though no, after the Saiyan arc, everyone's still alive and they're fighting a guy named Turles. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Drop down the 15 million. I'll be back later. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's almost like, um, what, like, how could it possibly, like, there's no way it could fit, mm-hmm. right? Like, a lot of these, I think there's one where it's actually impossible. I think it's Fusion Reborn. That's literally impossible. Yes, to fit I, into the timeline. The Broly movie is also impossible. It it's the the Bio Broly one. It's literally not possible for it to happen. Like okay. it would have to take place. Yeah, no literally Infusion two Reborn. Days. It's like there's no point in time where Vegeta is dead and Gohan is back on Earth at the same time. Oh yeah, um, right on that one. Because Vegeta and Gohan quote unquote die at the same time. Gohan's not dead, but nobody knows that. Until he shows back up as Ultimate Gohan later on, mm-hmm. but by the time he shows back up as Ultimate Gohan, he gets eaten right away up through the conclusion of Boo, and by the conclusion of Boo, uh, Vegeta's alive again. So there's no point where Vegeta is in Hell to make Gogeta, whereas Gohan would still be on Earth. So it's literally you can't fit it into the timeline no, at all. You're right, <laughs> and Dragon Ball has its own weird thing with their specific timeline one for it to make sense, but. In terms of other ones, I think the the My Hero actually is the one that I remember most of being like, because one of the movies actually is canon, and it's actually kind of annoying that it's canon. <laughs> they made the, uh, the, I think the third one, the one, the Three Musketeers, I think that's the one that ends up being uh, actual canon to it, which is very annoying for me because I've never seen it. I had to just look it up real quick to see what kind of implications it would be, and then I just kind of got a little bit angry, and then I went about my day never seeing the movie. So I don't know. I think... But then it also kind of feels like a, a waste sometimes if they don't actually do a new story. I don't know. It's ve- it's a very... T- maybe it's a little bit of a case of, like, it really kind of depends on the specific thing. Like, for example, when they did... When they showed the intro to Dragon Ball Super, and it was all Dragon Ball, but it was in 3D... But it was, like, updated since, like, the 80s when it first originally aired. I was like, that looks fucking awesome. And that made me more excited than the actual anything from Dragon Ball Super Hero did. So I was like, ah, it really kind of is a case-by-case basis whether or not I want actually something original versus something that is literally just give me the same thing again, but just make it look really nice. You know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. It's very hard. Yeah, and I think that is pretty much what it is. It's just, like... Hey, you like this thing? Here's some some prettier moments. Like I I would never recommend that anyone watch this in place of the arc personally. Mm-hmm. 
it, it like because it has better presentation in certain areas, but I feel like I, I would always have someone watch the anime arc first before they watch this. Yeah, I think I'm kind of on that same train of thought. Just because it really does, like, it's so, I think a lot, I think it also comes down to, I think, a lot, as we've learned, as a lot of people from Gendama have told us, is that they, for the most part, the Benizakura arc is kind of treated as maybe one of the weaker ones. So I feel like that's why they're kind, most people are now kind of okay with saying, like, oh, no, just watch the movie. I think it's actually very similar to the discussion about um, skipping parts in JoJo. Where it's like, eh, you don't technically need to see that, but I think that there's actually something to seeing it the way it was kind of originally meant to be, even if some parts of it may be to you feel a little bit old or feel a little bit outdated, I still think it's important to kind of see it in the way it was kind of meant to be originally shown, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. Yeah, so... That's at least our thoughts going into this. We will try very quickly to sum up what actually happens in here, because we've already done a full episode of what <laughs> go see the previous one if you want like actually you have to see yeah, the previous one yeah we don't really need to to go back through like the actual con it, it's the exact same plot yeah the only um, thing that's uh, almost different, identical the only thing that's different is that there's a different opening there's some added stuff in here which i kind of want to talk there's about a, there's added here. flashbacks to the the teacher like their their, their teacher. teacher yeah yeah and then there's an ending bit which is amazing <laughs> There's a great ending Yes, bit. the ending bit is really good. Yeah. So we'll start here with the beginning. This actually starts off kind of like the classic Gintama where you're trying to save money bit, where it's just a background while all three characters are talking to each other. Yeah, and there's there's just no, like, movement. There's absolutely no movement. Um, there's also, they start talking about the Warner Brothers saying that they're actual brothers, and they're like, they start comparing them to, like, Japanese brothers, and they're like, shut up, they're not actually brothers, <laughs> they're, they're a company. They also do this great gag, which they do three times, in which they start over the Warner Brothers logo, because <laughs> they keep restarting the movie. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, it was great. Um, when they did it, I think this- I like how they revisited the bit on the, um... How early are you actually going back? Because they go back again <laughs> to explaining the Amanto invasion. Yeah, they do. It was like that's too far back, and we haven't even been introduced. And they give like an introduction, and then Shimpachi gets fucking shit on by saying he's just a pair of glasses. Yeah, they just call him the spectacles, and then, and then move on. <laughs> and then the Warner Brothers logo starts again. The, the the get that gag is so funny actually funny enough when my brother he was watching it off the back of my head he's like did they just play the Warner Brothers logo again it's like yeah the, the, they're just getting <laughs> it's a gag they, they, get, they keep doing it uh, Zen why don't you try and tell us about the specific new scenes from what you can remember and then we'll come back to the ending bit of it here uh, so the, the new scenes are mostly to my memory just the scenes of the teacher um, kind of like their past, the three Katsura, um, Shinsuke, and Gintoki, and their little like moments with their teacher. There's the one in the very beginning where they're like in a school, and he gives them the books that Katsura and Shinsuke have later on. Uh, and then there's one later on where they're like walking down a road, and he's kind of giving them this lesson about what a sword is meant to be for, where it's not like to to defend your body, but to defend your soul, etc. Like it, basically like Bushido, samurai stuff. Um, I don't remember there being any other original ones other than like some redraws of certain things. Like I'm pretty sure for some reason the scene where Kagura and the girl spit on the the freaky guy got redrawn. It did uh, get redrawn. It, it the, stuff. The, the, the flame yeah. was more HD than ever before. <laughs> Uh, they added a naked condo. Very important. They still had to censor it, even though it's a movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the opening bit. So after the opening bit, it cuts from that to the Shinsengumi. Uh, and it has the Shinsengumi effectively set up exactly that. Like, the Shinsengumi entire bit there is just to basically give you all the context you don't have from the anime setup episodes. Yeah. Um, so it's Okita and Toshiro talking, and um, he's like, he basically gives this long exposition discussion on who Shinsuke is and the fact that he's back and like who he was in the war and he's reviving his group of 
like assassins or whatever. And then it cuts to a joke that Kondo uh, is practicing naked. Yeah, which apparently he just really likes getting naked based off of what we've known of Kondo so far. <laughs> so it really just kind of fits with him. He's he's the character who has at least gotten most naked. If we actually look the back, I think that's at least true in the 60 episodes we've watched. I think that's... Yeah, I can imagine so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, then there's, then basically the movie is the same, but actually there's one big change. I actually made a note of it here. They changed the rain scene. The, 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 the one where he, they did, they don't pass each other anymore. Um, she is watching him from a balcony. Yes. She's waiting for him to return there. That, that comes back at the end credits when she sees him return there. Um, but they also removed the song from the rain scene, and I was like, oh. Yes, that's... it's a different song, which is unfortunate because that song is really good. Yes, I was like, uh, I know why they had to cut it, because that was supposed to be a specific ending bit for an episode. It's different when it's an anime movie versus a TV show. You can have that be the ending of an episode, and you're like, damn, that's the end of that episode. And then you wait a week, and then you see it again. But in a movie, the movie has to continue. <laughs> so Yeah, the movie has to keep going. There's not a, none of that there, but I still made a note of it because I was like, "Damn, that that's a shame that they had to cut the song because that song is amazing." Um, and then of course they change the song, but the song that they play is still pretty good, but it does not hit the same when you've been hearing the same OP throughout the anime episodes. I feel, which is what we've no, it's beforehand. it's not yeah, it doesn't hit quite the same. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's still good for sure. Yes, for sure, one hundred percent. Just to make sure that no one's confused here, this movie's still very good and it's very movie nice. Movie slams. Yeah. Yes. It's just that like it it didn't have the emotional resonance uh with me that mm. the anime stuff uh that the anime had. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So now we get to the actual ending bit here, which is I forget. Do they do the credits first, where they're coming home, or do we see like a kind of like after credit image of stuff kind of happening afterwards, like the sword falling? Yeah, the they uh, they yeah they show like the big kind of after the fact thing where like they're flying away on the ship, and you see them all looking out at like the wreckage of the ship crashing, the Benny Zakra falling into the ocean. Uh, and then the walk back in the rain with, uh, actually, I don't know if it's still raining or not, but they're walking back and Kagura has the umbrella and Shinpachi is helping Gintoki walk. Yeah. And then they have, and then they go into the ending bit. Yeah. Which is the ending bit is them kind of like, <laughs> basically it's all the characters. They actually, the ending, the bending bit starts with them saying, here's the next movie it's going to be a Shishingumi side thing where they're saying the next movie is going to be Shishingumi related. Just all them. So we actually see scenes of like Kondo and Hijikata from the past, which I don't know if they'll ever visit this up, but this is our first look at them specifically in the past before they were the Shishingumi. Uh, so we get to see a bit of that, a little bit of, of Okita before he joined as well. And then it, the reveal is, is that it turns out like, is it Kintoki is the one who says, "Hey, hey, hey, stop it! What is this? What <laughs> we're not even in yeah, this show." Yeah, he's the one that's like, "This is yeah, this is my show." Yeah, this is my show. Uh, and they argue over who is going to get to get the second one, and they're like, "I can't believe you would tease our uh, helpless audience with this fake trailer." <laughs> it's not. Like, the, it's not. The, it's not fake if we actually do it. I think is their justification. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he goes. Well, it won't be fake if we do it, after all. <laughs> Which is good. Um, then that starts the cavalcade of all the characters that you would want. I think next comes in Atose, who says... It, uh, I, I don't think it's just all the characters you want. I think it's, like, every character. It's literally every character. It's even the, the old man who made the domestic violence yeah. robot. Uh-huh, the old man who made the domestic violence robot. Um, the the, the, the super cross-dresser con- bar people yes, are in there. It's the final scene where it's like all the people crammed together is like 99% of the, like it's gotta be. Yes. I saw people in there. And I was like, what the fuck? The fireman chief is in there. The Santa, Santa's in there. Santa and Ben are in there. <laughs> Every, literally everyone. <laughs> the homeless Gintoki is there. Uh, and the, many of them don't have a line. They're just there in the background. 
Um, Atose shows up. I think she's the next after saying that the movie should be there. Sachan shows up saying that it's unfair that she was not put into the movie at all. I think my favorite part is actually Kondo saying, like, what the hell's up with that? We were so lame in this movie. We didn't do anything. We knew what yeah, was happening. Well, they argue that that's why they want the next movie is because they... Kondo, because it's funny, the, I, one of my big criticisms as I was watching it, the biggest one was, like, the Shinsengumi was literally only put in here because people like them. Like, they, they did nothing. And then Kondo actually says... We did absolutely nothing in this movie. We might as well not have been here. And I was like, all right, I can't hate on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really like that bit where he's just like complaining about like his specific role. Because I actually was also thinking that too, that they don't really serve much of a purpose. Um, and finally, all the characters are arguing about which one should be next. My favorite bit is actually a callback to uh, Prince Hada, because Prince Hada shows up and he goes like, what are you doing here? He's like, uh, actually, my parody bit's not ready yet. And <laughs> that's well, yeah, whole... He was like, why haven't you played my parody bit yet? <laughs> yeah, it's not ready. Um, which is all good stuff. We also see specific characters. I think the eye patch lady is maybe going to be the next, uh, not maybe the next batch of episodes, but the start of the next batch. I also recognize her. I don't know her name, but she's from Jumpudi, which is why I remembered her. Um, yes, I don't remember her name either, and she hasn't been in any of the anime episodes we've seen so far. No, not um, yet. I think she is literally... But she seen, does appear. Yeah. Um, the dude breaks down through the... There's so many characters that show up again that I'm trying to recall so many. It really brings into contrast how many characters are in this when all of them... Yeah, bombard. there is a shitload of characters that so just show up here at the end so many i think it is let me see if i can find his name as i look into it it is ah damn it what is what is one of the one of uh gintoki's friends the one who uses the gun the one who holds the the one who gave uh katsura elizabeth that guy the one who calls him kimtoki because he can't remember his name's gin oh ah fuck sakamoto Sakamoto, yes, Sakamoto shows up and his, like his theme plays when he bursts into the door as well. Crashes the thing through the fucking building like he did before. Yes. And then the great part is, is that it's later revealed that they're on a movie set, so where the fuck did he crash that in from? <laughs> Makes yeah, no they've sense. been on a movie set the whole time, which so is one of the funniest reveals is when the movie set collapses. Yes. And then uh, maybe one of the funniest jokes in Gintama, period, is when the actual warner brothers show up and it's just w and b <laughs> w and, and they b. hold up actual volumes of bleach and naruto <laughs> and they're like what the fuck because <laughs> this is just way better than gintama yes so in the opening they said the only reason gintama got a movie is that they tricked him into saying that this was the best uh manga out at, at the moment and the, then at the, the most end... popular samurai anime in japan Yes, That's what and, they said. Yes, and then at the end it reveals that. And he goes, like, Naruto doesn't even have any samurai. <laughs> yeah. He's like, look at these. And he holds up Bleach and Naruto. And they're like, one of those is a ninja and the other is a Shinigami. They're not samurai either. <laughs> they're not samurai either. So good. But the best part is that the Warner Brothers speak Japanese, but they speak it in an American way. So they go, Yeah, they speak it with like, a Japanese-ish, American-ish accent where they're like, <laughs> They try to put on like an American voice while they're talking. It's just, it's which is so extremely good. funny. I love it so. I lo I love this gag in any Japanese thing ever. When it, it's a Japanese person pretending to be American, pretending to not know Japanese. <laughs> and then uh, the end bit is really funny too, where Gintoki's like, "They called us a crass, trashy anime, but isn't that really the biggest compliment of all? <laughs> it's over. <laughs> We're just getting started." And then they're like. What the fuck are you talking about? And then it just ends. Yeah, because the also the beginning <laughs> bit here is a, the long running one where they're not a hundred percent sure if Gintama is going to last at all, which is followed up by the fact that the next movie is called the final chapter, and then the movie after that is also called the final. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, they're like, we have no idea how the hell we're still on, so <laughs> let's go on that part. But yeah, that end bit was amazing i loved it it was so fucking funny especially because when the, he holds up the fucking real because those those are actual actual uh, manga covers too they used real books yeah it's the actual like think, manga covers yeah i think it's actually it's the, it's the 19, actual volumes yes number 19 and i think the next one will likely be 20 for bleach and then for naruto it's i think the first shippuden one 
And then the next one would be the one with Sasuke in it, I think. Very good gags here. Very good from the Warner Brothers. Man. Hell of a movie. Hell of a way to end it. But yeah, that's the overall movie. I think it's still worth watching. Maybe you should wait a bit if you're going to... Our suggestion is to watch the actual anime. It might be the We might be the only people in the world who are saying... So see the anime episodes first. Yeah, it seems like everyone else said that the uh, the movie is way better, and I feel like from a production standpoint, like yes, right. it is. Yes, but from, from the, we cannot the, argue uh, on production. <laughs> this movie yes. clearly has a budget. But the, the emotional resonance that the anime had with me was a lot higher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, maybe again, maybe it was just because I didn't know what was going to happen. So maybe if I had watched the movie first, I'd have been yeah. enraptured by the movie. I don't know. That's all. But. The anime, the anime popped off real hard, and yeah. the movies did too. But I felt like I wouldn't have liked some stuff in the movie as much if I hadn't already seen the anime version. Sure. And those fights, if anything, the fight is the, for all fights are. It's worth it to see it because it's fucking amazingly animated. Yes, the, all- fi- the the altered version of the final battle. Even though I wish it still had the anime song because that shit slammed. Um. The like the new animation for the final fight is crazy. It's so yeah, good, so good, so great. It actually makes me think that whenever we get, I don't know, it's probably going to be very a lot of episodes from now when we're going to be able to do the second movie. But whenever we finally get around to that, I'm very curious to see how they handle it there because I bet we'll have we'll have the pr- increased production. We won't know what the story is, and we'll just get the good fights, and we'll not know what anything is. So I bet that will be a better introduction to some stuff. I think but we'll see probably yeah but for sure definitely worth a watch i would probably wait someone suggested to wait around to episode 200 and then kind of check it out there to give a good refresher if that if at that point you might have forgotten some stuff and that would be pretty good to see in i will say some quick notes because i actually did take some notes of things i didn't notice or i noticed again while i was here uh, when they introduced the brother, I had no idea that when they first introduced them, the the loud brother was using the tiny little quiet hammer, and the quiet sister was using the big hammer. The giant hammer, yeah, that was that way in the anime, too. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> notice that. I, it was only when I saw it here, I was like, oh shit, I didn't notice that beforehand. So that was a nice thing to notice. I also really liked that, um, I think he mentions it very briefly in the anime, because I think uh, Katsura asked them what happened to your notebook, and he says the same thing he says here which is um something spilled on it and i threw I it spilled away. ramen on it and threw it out yeah yeah i actually did and it, it, it kind of hit me here seeing it a second time where it's like oh i think that actually kind of shows the difference that is in mindset between the three characters because you, you see here both katsura and uh, takatsuji are kind of ho- still holding on to this specific part of their past while gintoki long ago long time ago had it ruined and then he already had made peace with it and he let it go a long time ago he still remembers that specific thing but he doesn't let it kind of hold on to him like uh katsura and takatsuji do right here where they're still kind of holding it to them and are kind of still in some ways you can tell are still important to them is that they're still holding on to that part of the past so it kind of does kind of show to me that um gintoki's character is someone who's kind of like living for now like the past has happened there's nothing he can really do to change it so it's better to just kind of live life so i noticed that and i thought that was a pretty good metaphor there there you go we also never mentioned any of the moth stuff but that stuff's pretty good too like moths to flames it's a pretty good uh like nizo is seeing um a bright light and he's kind of acting like a moth itself where he keeps like ha- basically ramming his head into the bright light to see what happens to it and then it eventually leads to his death so i think it's a pretty good metaphor there too good metaphors all around in this one specific arc so much so it takes two episodes to fully digest them all at some point yeah it, it takes a bit but it is good stuff still good stuff um the brother's death scene was still really good yeah. The fight between Kentoki and Nizo went on top of the um the building or whatever it is their fight they fight on when they have the rematch when Kentoki yes, has yes. the real sword. Still really good, but a- another one that I feel like was frequently shot for shot the same fight. Just cleaned um, up. Yeah. But it was um Still really good. It, it All the big moments, it still hit those, for sure. 
the original fight between them where they're fighting on the bridge and stuff like that. All the Elizabeth gags still work. All perfectly good. The Elizabeth gag, I don't know why they... Exp- to my knowledge, they expanded it. And I don't know for sure if they did. But when... Because I, I don't remember if this was in the, the, the original anime episodes or not. But when she throws the sword to... Um, Shimpachi? Shimpachi. And he runs off screaming, Elizabeth uh, Senpai. There's a, there's a little background event after she throws in the sword where the samurai try to rush her and she turns the cannon at them and they all back off. <laughs> and I don't remember if that happened in the anime or not, but I noticed it here and it was funny as fuck. I don't, know where... enough, I, I don't know if she did that in the anime one because I also recall... Right? Like, oh, I don't well, remember her doing that in the anime one because I saw it in this one and I almost laughed out loud when she turns her little mouth cannon <laughs> and they're all like, oh! Yeah. And they like, fuck <laughs> off. It was really funny. Yeah, that was a good bit there too. I, I, that might be another case of I don't remember if that specifically happened in the anime one, but it, it did get brought more to my attention here. Yes, also good. the Liz... Uh riding on the front of the ship in like the higher quality fucking great <laughs> yes a lot of the gags were just like oh yeah i got to see that again but this time in even more quality than possible which is funny because usually they do already do a lot of the the liz gags as good quality as they can because it's just funnier when it's in better quality yeah every time liz does something in like like when she crashes the ship into the the one they're all on and the first attack she does on one of the sh- the soldiers uh, is, like, the highest def clip in the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then also, of course, the doing the classic bit of leaving a grave with a sword and <laughs> there in the rain. That gag is still good. It just makes it look Yes, classic. with the, the bloody coin purse or whatever. Yes. Also, I forgot to mention this, but they do show up as Captain Katsura, and uh, from they do they re, they redo the yes, uh, the Harlock the, gag, the Captain yeah. Katsura bit, yeah, which is pretty good. I have no idea for, because I have no idea who Captain Harlock is. I don't know what the fuck Elizabeth is dressed as. It just is like some weird Bieber haircut. So I'm just gonna yeah, go. It's with got this. like the, some kind of like anime Bieber cut. Yeah, yeah. Overall, definitely worth watching. There's literally probably. No, I don't know where I'm going with this. Either way, worth watching for sure. Fun time. Still, the same arc, still pretty good, even if we did think that some of the... Emo- because we watched it first, chances are the anime ended up hitting some specific notes for us a little bit better. So, yeah. Good first movie. I think that's a good sign for movies, Zen, because usually anime movies can really be hit or miss. <laughs> Maybe yes. it's just just because of our specific uh, Dragon Ball fandom, we've come to take anime movies as, is this one of the good ones, or is this one of the bad ones? Yeah, the Dragon Ball is extremely hit or miss. I feel like anime movies in general are hit or miss. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was quality all the way through. Yeah. For sure, for sure. We can't wait to get back into it. I think now we're good enough to go right back into some regular Gintama stuff here. We're ready to go back into the silly. With starting with next episode as we go through episodes, um, I believe it's 62, 63, 64, and 65. Because the previous arc ended at episode 61. So we'll be back with those four episodes. And we'll go back to talking about Gintama and we'll be back on track. And yeah, is there anything else you want to say, Zen, before we end it here? No, I think that uh, about covered it all. All right. Good so stuff. We, Just, yeah. you know, watch watch the episode first. Yeah, that's, uh, that's our suggestion. A very rare suggestion. And as always, we thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave a like. Feel free to leave a comment. I always like reading them. Uh, it's always very interesting to see what other people have to say about this specific episode. Because like I said, so many people are like, oh yeah, we've seen this so many countless times that it's actually very interesting to see someone going into it kind of blind like we are. So I'm very interested to see what the the overall, what they got to say about it as well. And you can subscribe to me if you want some more specific me type content. You can subscribe to Zen to see even more. He does an, an, his own thing with actual manga. So if you want to hear him talk about manga with the Ocean Man, then you can totally go do that. Trust me, there's never-ending Shonen Jump goodness from both sides here that you can experience. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So thanks again, everyone. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out. Say goodbye, Zen. 
Goodbye, everybody.